Half a day, everyone. I'm Nestor Lacanto with the Pacific Daily News. Here are the top stories from the PDN Newsroom. Brandon Michael Acosta, who was found guilty of the 2018 rape and murder of 15-year-old Tamika Nauta, was resentenced Tuesday to life without the possibility of parole by Superior Court Judge Vernon Perez. Acosta was already serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole after a jury in 2020 found him guilty on a number of felony charges. Those included aggravated murder, murder, manslaughter, home invasion, criminal sexual conduct, burglary, and aggravated assault. Acosta confessed to an inmate that he was responsible for the death of Nauta while he was in custody for a string of burglaries that took place days before around the same Dededo area where Nauta lived. He told Guam police officers that he blamed his drug use for the mistake of killing her. The Department of Corrections won't be seeking a pay adjustment for its officers at this time. In contrast to the Guam Police Department, whose officers got recent approval for a 25.59% increase in their base pay. Instead, corrections officials are working with the Department of Administration to establish higher standards for DOC officer positions. I'll just say, with the current salary, we don't see a need to increase salaries, DOC Director Fred Bordalio said during Tuesday's budget hearing for his department. Bordalio, a former chief of police with GPD, said DOC wants to set standards for corrections officer positions similar to the police department. For example, DOC would establish a minimum number of education or college credits to qualify for specific ranks. Rodalio said a major at DOC currently does not require a bachelor's degree, while a major with GPD does. If you're going to increase the standards to establish a higher quality workforce, then the salary should increase too, Rodalio said. And finally, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency on Monday announced a settlement with TriStar Terminals Guam for an unauthorized discharge of oily wastewater into Guam waters. As part of the settlement, the company will have to improve maintenance and operations at its 200-acre fuel storage facility in Hagat, according to a release from the U.S. EPA. In 2023, inspectors from the U.S. EPA and the Guam Environmental Protection Agency performed an in inspection at the TriStar facility and found that an unauthorized discharge of oily wastewater had reached the Big Guatali River, which flows into Apra Harbor. TriStar receives, stores, and distributes fuels in over 20 fuel storage tanks at the facility. Gasoline, A1 jet fuel, liquefied petroleum gas, number no. 5 residual fuel oil, and ultra low sulfur fuel oil are present at the site, according to the U.S. EPA. With the looming June 30 deadline for public schools to get in line with sanitary regulations or potentially face shutdown, Senator Duane Sinicholas wants the Guam Department of Education to open schools that are awaiting inspections. Legislation from Sinicholas would also allow schools to open even if they failed inspection at the discretion of the Education Superintendent Eric Swanson. Swanson late last month said 14 schools may miss the deadline to pass inspection from the Department of Public Health and Social Services. Swanson said public health could only work so fast to inspect schools and said that plans for major refurbishment work on seven schools will prevent inspections from being completed in a timely manner. Sir Nicholas recently met with GDOE leadership and wants to waive the deadline, though the move will face opposition from Education Committee Chairman Senator Chris Barnett. It's unclear which schools may miss the June 30 inspection deadline, as GDOE is not publicizing which schools will undergo major refurbishment work until pending contract details are finalized. In other news, the company acting as landlord for Science is Fun and Awesome Sifa Learning Academy Charter School says it doesn't want to disrupt education at the school, but something must be done about Sifa's unpaid rent. Eagle Land Holdings has taken Sifa to court, seeking $1.58 million in back rent, which the school has allegedly failed to pay while occupying its Barragata campus without a lease since June 30, 2023. Filings asked the court to order Sifa ejected from the campus. We really don't want to, Eagle Land Holdings President Olivia Brioso said Tuesday about the possibility of eviction. But we have to seek a legal way to address the issue because they are still staying on the property. Brioso said Sifa is still staying on the property even after the contract expired. And despite our repeated effort to conclude the expired lease, we still don't have a definitive answer, Brioso said. 
Numerous considerations had been extended to Sifa, Brioso said. Firstly, we are concerned about the students, which was why Eagle had waited until the conclusion of the school year in May to take Sifa to court. But she said the company could not continue to operate the property without adequate payment from Sifa or a lease in place, and the court action was taken to find a solution to the situation. And finally, it's been almost five years since the November 2019 electrical fire shut down the main Department of Public Health and Social Services facility in Mangilao. And senators on Tuesday grilled DPHSS officials about why the building has remained closed despite the clamor from nursing staff to reopen it. Public health officials were at the legislature for a hearing on their proposed fiscal 2025 budget. Speaker Therese Terlahi raised concern about nurses who had testified at a previous public hearing that they wanted the building reopened right away and that health care, especially for pregnant women, was severely impacted by the closure. DPHSS Acting Director Therese Ariola said in an interview with the PDN last week that she wanted to enter into an agreement to turn over the building to Guam Community College for a nurse education and training center that would include public health nurses. For more of these stories, go to guampdn.com and follow us on social media.